We'll start with Kirsten, third row to your left. Uh, Dave, just with what you've seen from Yoshinobu this postseason, what excites you kind of for what he could bring for this first World Series start? Um, I, I think the thing that excites me is um, his uh, temperament, uh, poise, the ability to control his emotions and um, still make pitches. So, uh, yeah, first World Series appearance and uh, he, he'll be ready. Go to Bill Plaschke on your right. Yeah, Dave. yeah, Doc, last night after you got home, did you watch a replay? Did you savor it? Did you have trouble sleeping? Was, was the adrenaline still going? I, I did. I actually, I did. I um, was got home and then my wife, my son, my mother-in-law, um, we did some uh, replay thing that you can do that I don't know how to do. My son put it up and you could kind of watch the quick highlights. And so I saw all that stuff. It was, it was pretty spectacular. Pretty, very spectacular, yeah. Go a little bit. Oh, got it. Uh, so we'll go. Who's up next? We have Clinton or Shy first, just because you're there, and then Clinton. Dave, in the ninth inning, there when you chose to walk Soto, and obviously, uh, it's it's a pretty tough gauntlet to navigate. So how are you factoring or where you're picking your poison between those three guys, and how much does them being left, right, right influence some of your decisions in that setup? Uh, it, it's certainly a pick your poison type of situation. Um, I think um, I've got to kind of weigh, you know, the moment, the uh, the, the, the today's game. Um, I, I, that's why I sort of thought about potentially shorten Kopech a little bit on his pitch count to have him ready, um, feeling frisky for tonight's game. Um, the particular matchup. I just felt, you know, right there, um, the game was on the line, and it certainly wasn't ideal to have Blake do an up down in game one. But I just felt that, um, you know, that was the game for me at that point in time. So that was kind of the thought, and it never feels good to walk to get to judge. Third row on your right, Dave Clinton. Dave, it's one thing for you to come home and have your moment and wake up and say it's just another day. How do you take that temperature amongst your guys, though, in terms of, hey, that was historic last night, but we've got this game, too. Here's what we're doing. Um, yeah, so I, I've made my way around. Um, guys, I, I, we celebrate the heck out of last night, as I thought we should have. But today, it's a new day, and uh, guys are back to work. So I do think that there's some kind of momentum, uh, excitement, that will kind of carry over to tonight's game. But as far as kind of just sitting back on last night's game, that's over. Uh, Juan, right in the second row here. Dave, do you know what you're going to do with your pitching plans for the next two, you know, for game three? And Walker will start game three. And what kind of went into going with Walker in three as opposed to maybe a bullpen game or, and vice versa? Um, I, I think it's just we, we just love Walker. Um, in big games, uh, the road isn't going to phase him. Um, it also allows him potentially to be available for a game seven, too. A little bit further back, Jack. Hey, Dave, with the uh, trying in last night in the 10th, were you surprised how well they ran the bases against him? And is that something where he's just got to be like quicker to the plate in those spots? Or how do you kind of weigh that? Um, wasn't surprised. Um, you know, you're just trying to weigh the fact that, you know, if Blake's a one, two to the plate, his stuff could take us, you know, could fall back, come back. Um, I just think that, you know, we can't give up the stolen base to Jazz to go to third base. That's the one that really um, was costly. But, um, we, you know, Blake's a guy that people run on. And, and so, but he, we got to still manage that a little bit better. Yeah. And then was Gavin okay after he slipped going around? Yeah, he was good. He was good. I just felt that, um, you know, after taking his at bat, I felt kind of still trying to make sure Gavin gets to the next day feeling good, a potential bang-bang play at home. Uh, there was also with the left-hander coming in, if there was an opportunity for CT to steal third base, I felt he was a much better candidate. So all that was kind of my decision. Uh, Tyler, far back on your right. Dave, you got some good uh, work in the middle there from Gratterall and Vessia. Um, you don't have Phillips, obviously, but what do Gratterall and Vessia bring and what makes them effective? Um, what they bring is uh, experience. Um, they're both neutral guys. Um, it's a different look as far as Gratterall. It, it's a it's a hard cutter. It's a it's a boring sinker. Um, so that's sort of different than most of the guys. Um, and 
with Vesia, it's just, uh, he's again, he's a neutral guy. Uh, he fills up the strike zone, and he's an uncomfortable at bat for, for both hit for both sides of the plate. Third row on your left, Kirsten. Dave, just quickly, with Freddie Freeman, how different does it feel managing him this series compared to the CS and the DS, just considering having those five days off and what you're seeing him even running the bases yesterday? He seemed to be, yes, I'm sure, in some pain, but uh, he just looked more comfortable. So, yeah, I mean, he still, there was still a, a lot that he, uh, incurred as far as kind of stuff last night uh there's some soreness today but yeah i mean i think that i was on pins and needles um each game in the in the ds and the cs so i do feel that we're in a better spot and just hopeful we can just get through tonight to then get to that off day same row, Fabian. Yeah, Dave. It seemed like Jack was like kind of like shaking his light there. That pitch right before the stand home run was that something that maybe was part of why you kind of pulled him after that first pitch to Jazz? Um, there's a little. His hamstring tightened up a little bit, uh, so I, I don't think it's going to be a big deal. But uh, that's why he was uh, shaking his leg. Yeah. And then uh, you guys have had stretches over the last couple of years where you guys have not been as good against left-handed pitching. And I think now you guys have the best OPS against lefties in baseball this year. What do you think has allowed this lineup to maybe be better against lefties? Um, well, I, I think that, uh, you know, the guys that we put on the roster, that we compose this roster, there's guys that are supposed to hit lefties. Their career track record speaks to that. And they've just performed. Um, I, I think that it, with baseball, at any point in time, you can kind of struggle. And that's part of hitting is hard. Um, but Teo's been good. Will Smith has been good. Um, obviously, Tommy's been a huge addition versus left-handed pitching. Um, and then, you know, Freddie and Shohei just sort of hang in there. And Mookie's been good. So, you know, on paper, which we know, all know it doesn't, you know, you don't play on paper. It, yeah, we line up. And uh, we still got our work cut out tonight. It's going to be heavy velocity and then, you know, breaking balls down below. So if we're good in the strike zone, um, we should have a good night. Ron right up front. Which of your teammates back in the minors first name do you hit doctor and who shortened it to doc? <laughs> uh, I think it was a guy named uh, Mac White, uh, South Carolina Gamecock. Uh, we played together our first year in Jamestown. Did he do both or did he hit doctor? And uh, you know what? I, I know that's where the name doc came from. So I probably self-proclaim myself the hit doctor, I guess. <laughs> Got a Barry up front. Hey, Doc. Um, so really, you know, you've been involved in two of the greatest games in history against the Yankees, 2004 and this one last night. How did the two compare? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, it, it's different from the two different vantage points, right. um, one being a player, one being a manager. Um, I, I just think that... Um, Gosh, man, that's a good one. I, I think for me that just World Series game one where we were at, this is probably, it's right up there, but I might give this one a little nod. <laughs> they, they both feel great. The, you do realize that most of the great games in baseball history involve the Yankees and the Dodgers if, or both. Yeah, I, I do. I do. That's just, you know, two huge markets, great players, and, you know, obviously, which creates great moments. Absolutely, Bear. A couple more, five rows back on your right. Can I ask about Gratterall's barehanded play and just sort of like what it says about his composure, mind state to make a play like that in that situation? Um, yeah, it, it's, uh, I'm happy he made the play. Um, it wasn't Tom Amansky-esque, um, but I'm happy he made the play. And yeah, he, he's very comfortable um, feeling his position however he goes about it. Anything else for Doc? Uh, Eric? Dave, we haven't seen the lineup. I know you said Kike is going to play. Is, is he at second? Is, is that your plan? Or? Kike is at second. Tommy will be in uh, center. Uh, Mickey Rowe will be at short. Thanks. Last question or two. All right, Doc. Thanks so much. All right. Appreciate thanks, guys. It.